Hello, Namaste, and good afternoon. This is Manashvi, and on behalf of our Optum IBITS team, I would like to welcome you all to our IBITS e-learning session organized by Foroptum. So a brief introduction about our program. IBITS e-learning session is an initiative by Foroptum, and it is an interactive program where we discuss optometric topics. And today we have Mr. Purab Dalal, who is going to speak on upgrading your optometric practice to specialty optometric practice. Before we start, I would like to give you all a brief introduction about our speaker, Mr. Purab Dalal. He has completed Bachelor's of Optometry from prestigious Lotus College of Optometry, Mumbai in 2014 and post-graduation from BMCO College, Surat in 2017, where he was a gold medalist. Currently, he owns a private optometry clinic and serves as a consultant optometrist at Sahajanand Eye Care. He is also working as visiting faculty at various optometry colleges in Gujarat. His area of interests are anterior segment and specialty contact lens. On behalf of Foroptom IBITS and our audience, I'd like to welcome you, sir. Thank you, Foroptom, for inviting me as a speaker. Thank you, Manasi. Uh, so, as you can see from the topic, what I want you all to know about the topic it is that I will share about my experience on how to upgrade a practice and stand out of the crowd rather than just limiting yourself to just an optical outlet or an optician. So we all are optometrists. So we should upgrade and we should show our clinical skill to upgrade our practice from a general optometry practice to a specialty optometry practice. So how we can do that, we will learn in, in this uh, topic. So first of all, uh, thank you again for optom for inviting me. Uh, so do I need to really uh, remind ourselves, our identity? So basically who are optometrists? So as per the World Council of Optometry, optometrists are the primary healthcare practitioner of the eye and visual system who provides comprehensive eye and vision care, which includes refraction and dispensing detection, diagnosis and management of disease in the eye and rehabilitation of conditions of visual system. So as per the definition, we are doing everything. So we need to follow each and every part of the definition. So uh, coming up to the role, role of an optometrist. So what an optometrist is, is capable to do. So about, uh, the first comes with the prescription of the correct Glasses, it includes wide range of uh, glasses like progressive additional lenses, occupational lenses. lenses. You, you should dis, uh, dispense a spectacle, not just sell a spectacle if, if you are an optometrist. Then we can work on the contact lens in prescribing different types of contact lens, including the specialty contact lens, which we are going to talk about in this topic in the later part. And, and also to treat irregular corneas like keratoconus and any other eye, uh, corneal diseases. Along with that, we also deal with pediatric population doing vision therapy as well as binocular vision assessment or a general pediatric eye examination also. And after that, we can also do and ma manage and uh, check the patient's eye. And if it's, if it's needed, and we can refer to the ophthalmologist also if, you, if, if we can, if we see any type of underlying disease or any underlying pathology. And the last but not the least, an optometrist is capable to provide a low vision aid which other optician as well as non non eye non uh, uh, expertise i can uh, eye care professional cannot do so with the help of low vision as you all know that we can uh, make the use of the remaining vision functional vision of that patient so patient can live their life again so uh, let us now I will like to present a scenario of optometry in especially India as I belong from India. I will like I have a study which is related to India based on the online survey which was done in the in, in one month by IBI. There are approximately 800 retail optical chain outlets, 1312 specialty eye hospital, 164 optometry institute and if if we look after that optical segment, then it is divided into two types, uh, into two parts. 15% of the optical retail chain outlets belongs to the big box stores. Like you can, you might have seen Lawrence and Mayo, Bonton, GKB. And this is the study done in 2016. Landscape and all came later, but 
uh, still before that there were uh, uh, big big box stores like this you can see in this slide and 85 percent of the outlets are mostly stand alone and small shops in local shops so what this 85 percent of outlets are doing yeah, many of these outlets have their optometrist uh, services available in the in there so what how we can improve our skills uh, we are now living in the era where where the world lies in the tip of the fingertips so there are a lot of marketing strategies uh, developed by the online entities as well as big box companies they come with so many offers that it becomes un unwinnable fight to beat them in terms of price but it doesn't mean that this cannot be solved so as we all know we are generally have a competition with online entities and many big box stores outlet but if you apply these three key features in your practice that is fast cheap and the quality then you can definitely beat them how because i know i surely understand that the online business are cheap as well as fast but the but they have questionable quality so where in terms of quality and services you can beat them up so uh, the, the price is is not always the right so as i explained the present scenario of optometry practice i am now discussing what actually is missed if the practice is limited to the optical outlets so we are going to talk about the optometrists especially who are working in an optical outlet so what they usually fail to do so they usually don't show their qualification as well as their expertise means if they are into some specialty they don't talk about this they don't talk about their qualification they don't talk about their uh, uh, studies so people should uh, uh, optometrists especially while working in optical outlets should focus on this second point the charge of consultation there are barely any optical outlets i have seen where they take a separate consultation charge for the service if you are a qualified enough with your clinical practice there will be no patient who will hesitate hesitate to pay the consultation fees so you should be you should ask for consultation charge you are qualified you have studied four years for as an optometrist so you should always ask for consultation charges i have seen many optometrists in work, working as a, in an optical are less proactive they just want to sell and uh, frame they don't want to dispense the frame they don't want to treat the patient they don't want to know about the complaints with, through which the patients are coming so be pro, be proactive uh, what i usually suggest uh, if we are working in an optical outlet you should always have a separate area for clinical evaluation as well as a separate area for dispensing don't do everything in one one place because you have many lots of uh, dispensing staff or normal general staff who will be there and the uh, and the patient will not be able to uh, recognize you and and he will not be able to make some difference from the staff so better you do your clinical evaluation in your clinic or in your separate room only don't do in an open space and the last thing which most of the optical forget and which most of the op optical don't keep is data keeping this data can be used for uh, for for feedback for getting feedback also for getting future patient also and always be social with the patient if the patient if you are if you are socially active with the patient they will uh, they will come to you with with lots of suggestions that they they might have a, some community which will need an eye care so you can provide an eye care as an eye care professional as an optometrist you should you are free to do, do eye, eye camps on your own also so always be social and talk about everything which i have shown in this slide so now we have moved uh, i hope i am now able to make you understand how does an optometry practice differs from a general op optical shop so what is the prerequisite what are the basic things which are required for an optometric clinic so the main main thing which is mostly i recommend all of the practitioner or a students here you invest on slit lamp mark my word if you are not investing on slit lamp you you will not be recognized as an eye care profession in simple term i, I will just say that many of the experienced practitioners might have told you this also i am also saying that you should have proper chain unit you should have slit lamp because most of the optical uh, optical stores in in uh, especially in india don't have slit lamp uh, you should have retinoscope as retinoscope is our bread and butter 
we should have an auto auto refractometer because it is easy and it is fast but if we do retinoscope on the normal patients also they will be pleased and they will be happy that they are, you are doing something different lensometer is must because you need to know about the previous history of glasses and the power which which was incorporated in them vision chart always keep a led vision chart or any uh, vision chart which has which are new don't just take a normal vision chart like a smilelan on the on the in the room and start to practice keep invest on vision chart because along with vision there are many things which you can check through a vision chart that is logmar logmar visual acuity testing pediatric visual acuity testing uh, contrast visual acuity testing astigmatism uh, uh, refining many things you can do i have just i have just incorporated a vision chart in my clinic and my pediatric opd is generally increased after one to two years so vision chart is must in which pediatric uh, charts which are incorporated in the led charts are very helpful you should always have a low, own layout examination sheet don't just write anything on the on the paper or a pen you should have your own sheet this they, you can see the my examination sheet in the picture and you can see that the front part of the examination sheet sheet includes the basic demographic data normal evaluation normal refraction as i am a contact lens uh, specialist i am a contact lens practitioner i have kept a separate uh, workup sheet for the contact lens so you can keep it both if you are practicing only as a general optometrist just keep the front part and always keep that because this will help to feed you in the in your future future services it will help to uh, you can install this data in the, in computerized structure also but raw data is very important direct ophthalmoscope patient, uh, students usually forget to perform forgot to perform direct ophthalmoscope on the patient because the cup this ratio you know it's it's only uh, it, it's very easy to locate with the help of a direct ophthalmoscope it doesn't require any type of dilation of pupil also so direct ophthalmoscope is very helpful if you see any underlying glaucoma uh, glaucoma com glaucoma complications or any other retinal pathology so you can refer them on this one so uh now we will be discussing about the specialities you hope you all are aware about this specialities but we will just go through it uh, so the first is pediatric optometry second is pediatric third is cornea and contact lens which is my favorite low vision and rehabilitation which is also very uh, good in when we talk about the optometrist and ocular disease and management which is more helpful in the abroad countries is mostly in nepal ocular disease and management is done at a larger scale community optometry which is done in india at a larger scale and vision therapy and neuro rehabilitation which is done mostly in the more of the uh, south southern states of india so uh, i peripherally feel that this specialty along with a normal general optometric uh, evaluation you should have some specialty add on which will make you uh, uh, something different from the crowd so my area of interest just just i am just reminding you that my area of interest is contact lens and cornea so most of my slide in the further for in further in this presentation will relate towards the contact lens but it's not that it's only for the contact lens you can apply the same specialties if you are dealing with the other specialty which are given here so when do you start with your specialty the first thing that is essential while setting a specialty practice is you should be have a good command over your specialty this could be achieved only if you have a good experience working in the specialty working in the specialty hospitals you have attended trainings fellowships workshops many anything which are related to your specialty then you can confidently come in the market so uh, this is very important second uh, <coughs> when you think of starting up a specialty you should have a certain amount goodwill of the clinic we were we are we were in the that uh, on that point the goodwill of the clinic and the practitioner himself also plays a key role in setting up your specialty if your general optometric practice is fairly good and patients are happy with your services then it's always advisable to start up with your specialty services last but not the least it comes heightened footfalls in your clinic if you have good amount of people visiting in your clinic in a day then there are some amount of patient which which 
can be referred in the which can be converted into speciality like if we talk about convergence insufficiency if we talk about speciality uh, contact lens then there are irregular corneas which we see in normal patients also so that patient will be converted into a into a speciality patient uh, in uh, if you have good number of pa uh, patient available in your clinic and always keep in mind if you don't if failing to plan is planning to fail you might you might have heard about this uh, before also so so once you have chosen your specialty now let us suppose we have chosen our specialty and i have chosen here as a contact lens as my specialty you have to decide uh, on where exactly you want to start the first option is your hometown not because you know there there is not so much amount of practices which are working here generally since you belong to the same place you will be aware with the number of practitioners practicing the same specialty and hence the saturation of the practices next is choosing the hometown is always good if you have any familial issues this can either be like you are the only you are the only son or the daughter in the family who is going to take care or you have no option to going away from the hometown then you can start in your hometown the third is having a familial legacy like if we talk about my case that my father is a diploma opto and he has his own optical outlet since last 20 years so i have used the name of my of my father outlet like sajanand optical and i have converted into sajanand eye care which i provided not general optometry services as well as special optometry special specialty services also the second option which is always open is bigger cities it has more i i know it has more options of expansion better collaboration better accessibility but it doesn't mean that when you are when you are uh, when you are based on your hometown there is no chance of expansion after all those who are scaled up into a longer bigger chains are some where some day a small uh, stand alone outlet also i will take an example of dhirubhai ambani here he was he, he came from a, a smaller village of gujarat and now you can, you can see his empire he is uh, owner of the reliance and he has lots in the in the optical field also he has this uh, chain called vision express so don't think that if you are not in the bigger cities you can't improve it's how you improve on your skill and your on your knowledge so once you are clear with when and where to start you have to be careful about the following thing, things that i am going to describe in this slide in this slide you should always start with a master plan it will always help in better execution analyze the competition that you are going to face in your specialty always seek advice from your patients from your elders from your father from your mother always hire the right people it doesn't mean that you need a uh, staff which are um, mostly oriented towards the eye care normal normal staff is also okay because if you have a good uh, staff which have a good management skill then they are a boon to your clinic because they can schedule proper appointments they are good at convincing the patients if we talk about dispensers so they are good at that it doesn't means that you require optometrists only you can start with the basic staff also but you have to train them always focus on the quality of eye care that you deliver to the patient do uh, take your clinic to the internet internet marketing comes with a possibility of failures and challenges be ready to face the risk after all smooth sea doesn't make skillful sailors right so uh, now we have you have gained some amount of knowledge about the starting a specialty thing now how you will establish yourself as a specialist first of all we talk about Uh, uh, fresh graduates means many of you are practicing. Uh, you are just doing a bachelor in optometry, and you are come. You have come into. Uh, you are coming to market just now only. So for them, educate yourself in your specialty. If we talk talk about contact lens, educate yourself in the contact lens mod modality. Be thorough with the literature, cut edge standard of care, new advancement, new researches which are happening in this con in this market. Working. residency and working under the cornea specialist is very helpful because if you want to go for a contact lens specialty contact lens and you are associated with a cornea specialist then obviously you will have good amount of contacts in the initial stage and that patient will be referred back to you so always establish yourself as a specialist and educate others also now what to the established practitioner 
be active in organization join or start a local contact lens group study groups or national optometry study groups like we are we, what i am doing right now i am just uh, keeping you aware about what i do and how you can upgrade so this is the activeness in the organization join iacl as well as american academy of optometry for contact lens and cornea because they provide you certificate for this set if you are if you have a certificate you will better know about the specialty of that particular topic and you will be recognized in the market so how you can establish also communicate just don't communicate with the uh, your fellow groups only always communicate with your patient that you you are interested in contact lens you know you have this new contact lens available in your practice and you are practicing since last 3 years they will be happy to hear from you and they will uh, be happy to treat from you uh, to be treated from you inform your fellow eye care pro providers including ophthalmologist about your new venture because corneal specialists are, are always uh, associated with the irregular cornea irregular cornea patient they have a good amount of reference capacity so take after this uh, take on the challenging challenging cases so it is essential to know that you are practicing a no surprise approach to the eye care what is that sometimes success is realized immediately sometimes it takes a few modi modification to get there let the patient know up front that the specialty lens fitting is a process if at first you don't succeed be willing to try something else explain your logic to the patient to keep them invested in the process and the service you are provided many of you take the more challenging cases such as irregular cornea patient as well as not are not very difficult i know they sometimes when you are starting a specialty you will not see a fit which are same like which are given in iacl but you can go with that fit if the patient is comfortable sees well and shows no evidence of physiological compromise from lens wear the fit should be successful and you can you can obviously go with that fit i have i came across to many students who come up with the doubt that sir this is not looking like what we have what we are taught so at that time i advise them then if you if the fit is following the this much amount of criteria then obviously you can go with that fit now why specialty contact lens adding a contact lens specialty will generate a new revenue to your practice because you are adding a something new stream your normal optical outlets is going on but you are adding a specialty contact lens which will provide you more income and uh, uh, more income as compared to the uh, as compared to the uh, normal optical outlet so you will have a new revenue stream along with that there are relatively higher number of population we are which are go willing to go for a refractive surgery because if they are willing to go for a refractive surgery they might have undergone to corneal topography at initial stage so from that moderate keratoconus as well as initial level of keratoconus are diagnosed and they are referred to you at the prior at as soon as possible so why specialty contact lens there is a great power in the patient doctor relationship if you are good at your clinical service then you always succeed in keeping the patient satisfaction high then higher higher you charge the patient is happy to pay that so always prioritize your quality of care over the moderate aspects of your service that's what a playing the loyalty card is if you have a fellowship if you have a recognition then it's always very uh, helpful show it to the your patient so how do you scale up your specialty contact lens clinic you should always make connections you should always connect with your patient you connect with the fellow eye care practitioner fellow ophthalmologist as well as corneal uh, corneal specialist train staff uh, if you don't train the staff you might end up seeing each and every patient on the alone as you can see in the gif it's very funny you have to do everything your staff will just look at you so better train them in initial insertion and contact lens and removal don't tell them to do the evaluation but at least do tell them to do the initial evaluation so it will give you more time to treat um, many number of patients at a time schedule your patient uh, appropriately because if you specialty contact lens takes more than 1 hour also for at a time so always schedule an appointment in such cases update office protocols means you should have certain amount of uh, testing charge certain amount of appointments 
certain amount of timing which are more towards the specialty contact lens and this timing for dispensing so you update your office protocol invest in technology friends always keep in mind uh, patients are always happy to learn about technology they are they will they feel happy if they if they if they see something new and they get treated by you, by you so always invest in can technology show them that this machine is used in your is used in your practice for this evaluation always educate others about your practice don't be tied in making connection don't be so much tied in making connection because what happens that you will get reference from a normal gp general practitioner also you will get patients and that patient may be a spectacle patient also or maybe a contact lens patient also you don't never know now uh, once you have established your specialty i feel now you might be clear about how to develop and establish your specialty how to retain them it's very important if you work in contact lens and you don't you, you don't do follow up then you are missing something so how to improve that we will educate our uh, your patient about the optimized lens uh, lens wear success the first method is by the help of a handout it is true that the same message when verbally said and when visually expressed we tend to remember the one that is visually expressed the same applies here no matter how many hours you are explained verbally about about the lens handling to the patient next time your patient will enter inquire they, they will have an excuse that they forgot the procedure it's along with verbal you give an handout i am very much sure that uh, they will be more compliant if they with the lens handling if they if you have given them hand, handouts or you have shown them videos then comes optimizing compliance initially when they are new to the contact lens where they tend to forget the things you can either call or keep reminding them through mails to see if they are doing okay with their contact lens follow up is the must encourage the patient to see you even if don't if they don't have any complication educate them how essential is to see the status of the lens even though don't you don't have any signs and symptoms remind them remind them with the follow up on whatsapp on emails on phone etc so what are the equipments if we go deeply into contact lens specialty you might be aware about it we will not go in detail like you can see a corneal topographer which helps to map your cornea to see the anterior part of the cornea then you can have a specular microscope a slit lamp always if it's possible have a video camera which is or, or a photograph attached slit lamp because it will help your help you to explain your patient what you are doing and it will help you to show to your patient that the lens will rest on your cornea like this and it will, there are no chances of getting misplaced or there are less amount of chance to get of you to getting another uh, unaware about it so always show them with the help of the video or a photograph and the last pentacam uh, it is very helpful as along with the corneal topography because it gives at uh, anterior as well as posterior cornea along with the corneal thickness i know initial investment to these three instrument like corneal topography specular microscope as well as pentacam it's very difficult but you ask your patient to bring with the reports make a tie up with the centers which are performing this uh, test so always acknowledge always ask them to bring the reports if they are coming for the specialty contact lens so which are the potential i will not again go in detail because you are our uh, mostly the third year and final year student as well as the practitioner like keratoconus you know about the keratoconus pmd intact surgery intact surgery keratoglose corneal corneal injury rk post keratoplasty post lactis lasik ectasia severe dry eye high astigmatism progressive myopia as well as aphasia this all patients are included in the cornea uh, in specialty contact lens it doesn't mean that you not need only keratoconus any of the corneal abnormalities are incorporated are used are potential candidates for specialty contact lens now which are the specialty lenses we'll go in brief about it like we have a corneal i i usually i i will talk about my clinic so i i have a corneal gp lens which is around 8 to 10 mm in diameter intralimbal which are larger diameter gp lenses which are 10 to 12 mm scleral which are of di whose diameter is about 
it includes mini scleral as well as full scleral although i don't have full scleral trial set in my clinic i have mini scleral only piggyback hybrid and customized soft contact lens also therapeutic as well as prosthetic contact lens i will like to add the one thing in this case i have seen many of the practitioner just giving the box without taking any measurements or else without explaining the patient you you that patient may be a candidate of a customized soft contact lens also every base cover every patient curvature is not cannot be fitted with an 8.6 base base cover usually i see many of the uh, optometrists practicing normal normal uh, in uh, the contact lens which are provided by the company which are easily available don't always jump into such contact lens think about it do preliminary examination do keratometry reading and then prescribe uh as well as i will like to add one thing that if we go about uh, rgp contact lens many of the students at initial at the second third year level learn about RG, rgp contact lens rgp contact lens but by the time they came out of the college they forgot it they don't practice it even i feel that an rgp contact lens is a specialty lens if i have treated a patient whose vision has improved from 3 by 60 to 6 by 5 with a normal rgp contact lens and he is using that happily so don't ignore a rgp contact lens it can be used as a specialty lens so these are the sets atlantis ministerial set which are available in, with me uh, as well as you have multifocal trial set as well as i have roske sets also so what are the recent advancement in optometry we will talk in brief about it many of the students we may have, might, might didn't know about this but this is a diaton scleral diatonometry which is done with the help of diaton tonometer in this patient are patient come with a scleral contact lens in their eye right? and we don't we are not uh, we don't we don't have to remove the contact lens and measure the iop just with from the up, uh, from the top of the upper lid we can measure the iop as you all know there is a conflict and there are researches are going that use of keral contact lens for larger hours leads to increase in iop throughout the day then the second point is iprint pro which is a latest technology in scleral contact lens in which they have a blue color molded die which is inserted into the eye it takes shape of the anterior cornea and then with the help of a automatic machine a contact lens similar to that curv curvature is developed and it is 100% satisfactorily it has good percent satisfactory result as well as good visual capability or capacity also other than that we have ilux mgd treatment device where we can treat block mybomian glands in the lower eyelid with the help of a heat or a thermal light which are incorporated in this instrument usually patient complain with you and they usually drop out of contact lens because of eyelid abnormalities for that you can invest on this these are expensive in instrument it takes time to buy this but you should know about the recent advances so what are the musts in marketing promote your specialty as well as services Tell each and every patient, although it's only a minus 0.5 diopter myo, always explain them about your specialty, what you are doing, and what you want them to explain it from you. And always promote your specialty that you can go for contact lens, you can go for this evaluation. Have a separate consultant ch chart for that specialty. Always clean, use a clean, polished website and with professional head heads on. Higher. a uh, website developer for this i will recommend you if you are able to do that you should always have your website make make your site robust <coughs> with information for patient as well as referring doctor give acknowledgement to the doctors you obviously you have some economical connection with the referring referring doctors also always acknowledge them always show their importance in your practice and always make your site with a good uh, robust with a good clinical pictures which you are fitting the contact lens in irregular cornea and the patients like that also highlight your research of interest if you are more interested in contact lens and you and and for example you are doing orthokeratology then talk about orthokeratology this is something new which i am developing in my clinic include crisp clinical images for illustration you should educate your patient with the help of images from your website also or from your led charts also referral letters to the other corneal specialist i have usually seen i have usually seen that many practitioner just give right their uh, send their patient to the ophthalmologist and they call the ophthalmologist it's not a 
professional way of doing that you should have your referral letters like if we go for any uh, uh, any evaluation then they write the tests which are going to perform and they send it so do the same thing you write the differential diagnosis what you want that uh, ophthalmologist to do it from from your their side and send that patient to them show about your recent achievements in your waiting area because patient will have will have lots of time when because specialty contact lens is a time consuming thing so they may wait for you in the waiting area by that time they will see your certification they, they will see your workshop areas of interest and many other uh, things which you have done for your eye care services so as you are aware about the social channels i don't know i don't need to go in detail about this like you can promote your clinic in linkedin youtube facebook website as well as instagram also as we are suffering from the covid 19 pandemic i will just take, take last five minutes over it so once we are come we came up with this uh, we are we fought with this covid 19 and again we are back to work our fight is not over just remember these five things before entering your clinic manage your patient ask the patient give them appointment ask for the previous history of any of the infection which have affected in, in in the last two three months because they might be the carrier of the virus it will affect you as well as your staff always i will ask that the ask all the optometrists who are practicing in optical as well as in hospital to wear ppe kits it is available easily you have to wear it like n95 mask gloves there is one thing which you can see in the picture that is uh, a shield a slit lamp shield which is uh, which American Academy of Ophthalmology has approved and they have told each and every eye care, eye care professional to use it in their clinic. Hand sanitizing at every 20, uh, for 20 seconds you have to clean your hand at a regular interval of time and always monitor your practitioner as well as staff. If your staff is suffering from any uh, flu-like symptom, ask them don't come at, at your clinic for few days because they might be a carrier. So this is a very good topic which I got from the BCLA journal and they have explained that how you can be affected by this virus or your next patient can also be affected. Like if you are seeing in the news also that if the patient sneezes or if he breathes also then the virus are in the form of droplets in very small parts and they are directly transmitted to the you by air or through direct contact as well as if they have kept their chin also on the slit lens then uh, the next patient might also be get affected. So always clean your instrument with sodium hypochlorite and a normal alcohol swab which we use in hospital. So clean, you have to disinfect because we are suffering a large amount of loss with this pandemic and we have to be serious about it. So uh, uh, stay safe, stay healthy. This is how I will just tell you in brief how I work that I have a separate less uh, clinical evaluation testing area which is seen in which you can see in the below slide the upper slide shows the dispensing counter uh, this is 650 square foot area in which i have designed that uh, one one cabin for testing optometric testing and one other outside area for general dispensing this is my leaflet in the uh, local newspaper which i provide uh, in the for <coughs> for my advertisement so and what is the conclusion after talking all this uh, you should be enthusiasm to accept the challenge accept the challenge in managing the complex cases i want you to uh, fight and to learn these cases and you have to practice as soon as possible bringing up satisfaction to your patient with your enthusiasm in your practice will obviously give good amount of reference because i have in i have working since last four years five years in my clinic and my new patients are just referred from the previous patients only so your patients are good amount have a good capacity of reference work over it so thank you for optom for calling me once again this is my contact number you can email me also and now we are free for question and answer section thank you Thank you, Arvind. That was a wonderful presentation, sir. And I'm sure, like me, our audiences have enjoyed it as well. And uh, guys, we are open for discussions. So if you have any questions, uh, please uh, feel free to ask yourself or just type it out in the chat box and I will ask them to you.
Um, so I have a question uh, from my side, sir. So uh, what is the uh, best specialty to get into other than contact lenses in terms of profit or in terms of satisfaction as well? Uh, if you talk about profit, then you are going into business part especially. <laughs> so for that, what I will advise you that which is the area of your interest? What you have learned other than your bachelor studies? If you have if you have done if you have attended workshop and you feel that vision therapy is my forte, then you can jump into your speciality. But come if we come into the profit part, then the those things which includes a product like a contact lens is a product which you have to give to your patient, then it will give you more profit. I personally feel that <laughs> because in India, as you all know, that managing and treating a disease is not. Uh, what I can say that is not uh, advisable means you are not authorized that much to dilate each and every patient. So I feel contact lens is a good thing where you can work as well as and you can work on low vision also because many of the patients you will get from the retinal retinal uh, doctors. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for the answer, sir. Uh, similarly, the other question we have received here is, is it possible to do masters in contact lens instead of just a fellowship? And if yes, then could you guide our audience on the best university to apply? No, Evo technology, Evo technology. Masters is not particularly contact lens. Masters is general in which you learn all the specialty optometric thing. I have done, there is nothing, something like masters in contact lens. You should do fellowship. If you don't want to go for masters, if you want to learn thoroughly about your contact lens, then you should do fellowship. And the uh, best university is, as we all know, uh, uh, the multi-speciality uh, tertiary eye care centers of India, like Shankar Netrala, as well as LV Prasad, and many more are there. Whichever is suitable and whichever is convenient from you, just do it from there. And if we talk about the university, so when we talk about masters, then university matters. But when we talk about the fellowship, from where we took the our uh, experience is important. So if you are doing masters, then it would be it should be good from a from a, it should be done from a good university like we have done from V Narmat South Gujarat University, which is which is recognized all over the. Uh, and uh, in the present context, as well as for the future, what specialities do you see thriving right now, I, as well as in the future? I see contact lens at the first position. <laughs> I maybe I may be more attracted toward this, but it has first position. Second is vision therapy and neuro optometry, which we which I see many of the practitioners from the south are doing at a larger scale. We have many speakers also in this with doing that. So. It's uh, opto, uh, contact lens, vision therapy, and then it comes, you can go for low vision. Because general optometry practice is you will be able to do in a normal optical outlet also. So how you develop and how you grow, it depends on your area of interest and how much knowledge you get it uh, in that particular special. And uh, what about the future? What do you see growing more uh, in, into the future? I, uh, as I said, that if you talk about the contact lens, then my, uh, myopia is a, is you can say it is a pandemic. It is increasing day by day. So orthokeratology, as if I have not started yet, but this is a future. You want your patient to treat, to get treatment as soon as possible. But uh, especially in India, it will take four or five years more. And if we talk about vision therapy, then behavioral optometry, we have tomorrow's session over that also. And uh, many other fields like which which has future scope and the researches are, are uh, over that. Um, all the practitioners are practicing and do, work, working over it. So you can do that. Uh, okay, and as an optometrist, like uh, we can open a clinic for eye care. And so how important do you think an ophthalmologist's guidance is? Uh, what is the importance of it? And is it uh, very important or is just so and so basically? It is uh, It is very important. Ophthalmo you, you don't see ophthalmologist as your competitor. You just see him as a friend. He will send you patient and you will, uh, he will get the patient back. Means for I'm example, if, if you are, for example, if you are getting a, a patient with a cataract, then you have to uh, refer that patient to the ophthalmologist with a proper referral letter. And you can get your economic, uh, you can talk about the 
financial thing before referring also and you have to visit them you have to tell them that i am doing this thing i just want you to send me the patient or if at all what i do that if they are not willing to send me also i just give i just tell tell them that you give me an appointment i will come and i will treat your patient i will give specialty contact lens at your clinic only because in india there mostly more of the ophthalmologists are conservative and don't they don't send their patient they think everything should be performed in one center then it if you are doing contact lens then that's, that's also possible that is also possible okay similarly uh, the, uh... Right now, with this pandemic going on, what changes do you uh, feel that is coming after the lockdown in the practice? Uh, as many researches are going, uh, have said that contact lenses are not the mode of the transmission of this disease. So you have to take disinfection steps uh, very, take it very seriously first of all, and you have to educate your patient that only thing that contact lens or any other uh, a spectacle can also be spectacle and also transmit this disease so after the pandemic it is very difficult if we talk about especially getting the patient at the initial one two months but so i am i am hoping that sooner by the end of this year will it will be normal and we will back to its own practice and what i usually suggest that if you are one that's that's what i told in this slide that if you are focusing into a contact lens specialist you should also start your normal dispensing also you don't stick to one thing if it's possible because uh, if one is a bit slow then one can cope up with that this is just an ad advancement and it will help you okay the normal opd will help you to gain money and this is just a new revenue stream you, you just think about it. Thank okay, you. thank you for the answer, sir. Uh, similarly, uh, a lot of students, including myself, we have a lot of um, you know duality on the subject uh, that uh, whether should I pursue masters or should I pursue fellowship. So, what is your take on it, and what is advisable for what kind of people? So, especially uh, if my advice is that if you do first masters, then you will be. Uh, you should you will be get to know about the different specialty which, which are available in optometry for the first point if you are done from the good universities like us as well as many other like chitkara and many things many universities are providing it then your area of interest will open and then you will feel and by the time you are doing masters indulge yourself in some of the activities like working in an optical outlet or working with an mnc mnc if it is possible if it is not full time then Definitely, masters is the first option. But if you think that my contact lens OPD is good, my uh, contact lens OPD is good, and I want to improve in that, then fellowship is the first choice. Because for me, I was not ready with my OPD, so I did the masters. By the mas since when I completed the masters, I have good amount of uh, uh, contact lens patient ready, and then. I invested in specialty contact lens, done training in many of the workshop as well as many institutes also. And then I started with the specialty contact lens. So masters opened me the area of interest in my case. So you can be you can think like think like that also. It depends on how you think. <laughs> So similarly, uh, for the optometrist who want to start up with the uh, contact lens clinic, so how do you suggest they uh, start with it how do you suggest they go ahead with it like how do they get the trial set and you know things like that uh for initially as was it was given in the size you should start with a master plan if you are if you don't if you don't have a if you not have a if you do not have a optical background then you should have some amount of context ready with you if that much amount of context uh, patients are ready to come to you then you can think that my contact lens OPD will go on because as I have seen that in Nepal contact lens is a bit of uh, not promoted very uh, at a first step. So if I talk about India, then the people are aware about the contact lens and they listen to what the specialty is coming. So first of all, focus on your goal, focus on your page target patient that which of patients you are dealing with daily, and then you can 
jump into a speciality and then you can jump for a contact lens for contact lens you don't even need a uh, bigger instrument like topography and all if you have a auto k with keratometer one trial set one trial frame along with that uh, normal chair unit and slit lamp invest on slit lamp i am saying this saying this for the second time if you don't have slit lamp don't do contact lens because you will miss many of the pathologies at the initial stage and that patient will be a drop out so and the other thing after you have done certain amount of patient after you are ready with certain amount of patient then market yourself your shop or your clinic or your or uh, hospital where you are working and then call the uh, multinational companies there they will take the seminar they will provide you trials if you have good amount of business with them it requires business at initial stages with them but they will help you you are an optometrist you talk with the higher professional optometrist which uh, uh, which i think uh, many of the uh, sirs which are associated with many companies have come across in this uh, series also so if you talk with them they will definitely help you in getting all these trial sets and uh, how to develop and everything and do companies also support for the specialty trials sir no uh, initially uh if we talk about specialty trial that company don't support for uh, uh, specialty trials you need an investment of around if you talk about roske then it's goes to around 50000 and in some cases it may goes to around it may go to around 1 lakh also so specialty contact lens doesn't give trials but if you are happy with your contact lens patient and you feel that uh you can do this and you have this much amount of contacts and reference referrals then that amount of trial will be uh, get easily converted by two three patients only because if we talk about the roske the price of roske goes from 15000 to 18000 per uh, per lens so if we sell two three pairs then our uh, cost is almost recover no specialty trials are not available i have invested in my trial sets and then i am doing this thank, thank you for the answers sir uh, we are now wrapped up with our question answers and on behalf of ibids and our audience we would like to thank you very much for you giving us your valuable time and the lovely experience uh, the presentation was definitely very uh, enjoyable as well as educational to you, uh, to us uh, so i just like to request you to share your experience on for optum ibids today uh as 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 you all as you have gone through the presentation the topic was more of a practical part so for optum series is doing great in that in providing the knowledge to the students as well as the practitioner also so i would uh, again once again thanks for optum series uh, thanks to all the organization uh, organizer for calling me up thanks to aswita for giving my name and thanks you all for uh, members of the for optum series i would have loved to join with you again in the future thank you it's good thank you so much uh, thank you so much for your kind words sir it was honor it, it, was, it was an honor to have you here we immensely enjoyed the presentation and we hope to interact with you further on any new upcoming programs as well as plans that for optom has and uh, this brings us to the end of the program and i would also like to thank our audiences for being ever so supportive kind attentive and interactive and uh, on that note i would like to end the meeting this session will be on youtube soon and stay tuned for more sessions and programs by ibits and for optom you can also visit us at www.foroptom.com for more information on for optom and ibits also join us on social media whatsapp facebook and instagram thank you and have a great day thanks for optom thanks ib for everything thank you thank stay you so safe, much stay safe stay healthy stay at home thank you <laughs> thank you sir yes stay at home everybody thank you <laughs>